Good evening, folks, and uh, welcome to another Bible study, Wednesday Bible study. Uh, what's kind of evolved and come about is that we take a topical question and answer it. Uh, this week, our question is, is this statement true? I'm going to put it th this way. Is this statement true or false? God won't give you more than you can handle. Now, just for clarity's sake, let me rephrase it. True or false, God isn't willing to give you more than you can handle. And then a third kind of rephrasing, God is unable to give you more than you can handle. All right, so we have those three that are basically in the same arena. The second arena is we have God and we have us. And then we have ability and capability. So anytime we have those four things, you're going to find Christology. And that's what we're going to look for is Christology. You've got God, you've got us, you've got ability and you uh, uh, and you have uh, capability um, so the question really comes down to well, the, well there's a dichotomy here there's two things when it comes to will God give you more than you can handle or not and it comes down to trial and temptation now, I don't, I'm not separating those as a dichotomy, as a false dichotomy, as to, to say something along the lines of, well, God will give one and not the other, or um, one is better than the other, or anything like that, although I'm going to say s some of those things. Um, but I do want to focus first on temptation. But before we get into that, since we are taking these topical videos, topical classes, and asking questions, there are some questions that are going to come up in this Bible study um, that I'm not going to answer because they will make great co video questions or Bible study questions in the future. For example, in the Genesis account, why did God... Uh, plant two trees um, in, in the garden. Uh, that question I'm not going to answer purposefully uh, because I want to, I want to uh, have that set aside for another, another Bible study. Uh, with that being said, let's ask the question and let's find out. Is it true or false? God will not give you more than you can handle. Well, let's dig in real quick. First of all, we have temptation. From Luther's small catechism, we have the sixth petition. Lead us not into temptation. What does this mean? God indeed tempts no one. But we pray in this petition that God would guard and keep us so that the devil the word and our flesh might not deceive us nor seduce us into misbelief, despair, or, and other great shame and vice, though we be assailed by them, that still we may finally overcome and gain the victory. Now, this both helps us unearth the, the answer to uh, what, what temptation is and if God himself tempts. Um, and of course, God tempts no one. That's the first uh, five, five words if you count indeed. God indeed tempts no one. He does not tempt. Uh, and, and, and that's why we pray to him. Not, uh, we don't pray to him 
to asking him not to tempt us. We pray to him knowing that he will not tempt us. But we pray to him that we would be delivered from temptation, from the devil and our sinful flesh. Now, that, there's another question that, that, that we can ask that I'm going to put over here. Uh, so we have, the, the, did God put, why did God put both, tree, both trees? And does the devil really make us do it? That's another question that, that, we'll, that I'm not going to answer, but we'll take on later. Um, but then there's also this language in here. So that, so that the devil, the world, and our flesh may not deceive us, nor seduce us into our own misbelief, despair, and other great shame and vice. And though we be assailed by, by them, that still, and here comes the, the active uh, uh, language that is very interesting, that we're going to have to look at, that we may finally overcome and gain the victory. So there is Luther's small catechism. Now, we know that God does not tempt. In fact, it's quite the opposite. In Genesis, this is where I'm going to have to be careful to not answer the question that we're going to use for another, uh, for another study. We see God not, not only not tempting, but in chapter 1, he says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. And God said, Let there be light. And, uh, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Okay, and then la uh, 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 later on, we find... That again, that he finds his creation uh, good. The dry lands and the seas. And saw that it was good. Vegetation uh, and, and fruit trees. Um, and he saw that it was good. And uh, uh, etc. Et he saw that uh, all of these things were good. The stars in the heavens uh, the rule, uh, ruling over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness and he saw that it was good the fourth day uh, the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures uh, birds of the air he saw that that was good um, and, and con continuing uh, let, let us bring forth living creatures of all kinds livestock creeping things I saw that it was good and then he says so God, create, uh, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock and over all of the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So not only did God say that everything was good and perfect and according to his will, but he also gave perfect dominion over everything that he called good. He gave mankind dominion to rule over everything that he called good. He didn't put them in the garden and, and then tempt them, and this is where I have to be careful, and then tempt them by putting two trees in there and going, huh, 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 looks good, doesn't, doesn't that one look good? The, the one with all the knowledge of, the, of, of the, the goodness and the evilness. Don't you want that one? God didn't do that. So we look to the one who did. Chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. And I mean, how, without knowing, without having knowledge of evil, uh, she she could truly not have knowledge of death. 
she the only knowledge that she would have of death is that God told her that she would die. She uh, knows the word without knowing the concept. Uh, and 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 Satan uses that to his own advantage. You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, uh, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And right there we see Satan's understanding of knowing good and evil, um, or godliness. For Satan, godliness is to know good and evil. And therein lies our temptation. Our temptation is not, is not that we would know good and evil, for we now know good and evil, for Eve and Adam fell. Um, we know good and evil. Uh, we just desire now to manipulate them to our own will. And that's the temptation. Do we, or how do we, probably would be the more fun question, how do we manipulate evil into fun and good into some kind of twisted evil? Um, because like I've said before, sinning is, is fun. Um, there's no doubt about that. Uh, it also kills you. Um, so, with that being said, we have those those temptations, um, and with those temptations, then on the other side we have trial. That and 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 with trial we understand that God is constantly refining us, who who we are, uh, and even even as we sin, God can use uh, God uses our repentance. Uh, and and for and forgives us, and uses that our the the results on earth to his benefit and his glory. Um, so if a loved one dies, that is the result of sin on earth. Uh, not not and I'm not of course I'm not saying that it's the result of that 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 person sinned so much that they died early or 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 whatever I'm saying that because they sin they die because I sin I will die now that leaves parents grandparents um, uh, children um, cousins whoever aunties uncles whomever it may be in mourning and in that mourning uh, you can you can be refined. You can be uh, made stronger. Uh, you can even find a connection with that lost loved one that you never even knew uh, it existed because they never expressed it. Uh, God uses these these trials not not in in so much as He created them for the person, uh, but that he uses them to sharpen it, to, to sharpen the person like you would a sword. You don't sharpen a sword uh, with, with pillows, uh, with throw pillows and, and blankets and things like that. Uh, you sharpen uh, steel with, uh, with, with, with iron and with, and with rock. Uh, and it's a very violent process. So when sin happens in our lives, and when we sin and we repent, we can be, we can, we, we are going through a trial, whether we like it or not. When we fall into temptation, we are going through a trial. And in that trial, we can come out uh, forgiven penitence and, and uh, be sharpened by it, or we can be unpenitent uh, pagans. Um, which in, in which there's no need for sharpening uh, because their because their tongue is forked anyway. Um, so there we have the, the difference between trial and temptation. Uh, which one of these is God does God give you? 
we see in, from Luther that God does not tempt anyone. We see from the sixth petition, and lead us not into temptation. Instead, deliver us from evil in the seventh petition. We know that God does not give us temptation. God also does not give us trials. For example, um, God did not try Job and allow Job to be uh, tried by Satan. Um, and when, when, when I say this, uh, it it means it means that God allowed Satan to to uh, tempt Job, and Job went through a trial. And God certainly um, has tried His people. Uh, yet, again, Christologically, when, when you look at the at trials given by God, they're typically post incarnation. Of Christ, but and and they're not uh, they're not Adam and Eve, Job, um, certainly uh, not King David, uh, etc. Which which we're going to bring up here in a second in the Psalms. Um, so he doesn't tempt, tempt us, and according to Christ, he doesn't give us trials as if we are to win them or overcome them and then when we win them and overcome them outside of Christ then we are one step closer to heaven so the answer then the simple answer is does uh, true or false God gives us more uh, God is not is not willing or God will not give us more than we can handle uh, the answer is it's a bad question um, the other answer is yes and that's that's the answer that people don't like to hear that's why you should never say this at funerals please never say this or 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 uh, or, or mourning places or uh, by the by, a bedside of, of a sick person. Oh, don't worry, because it's a great. It's it, it's it's a platitude. God won't give us more than we can handle until we die. We can't handle that very well. We don't handle it very well. Um, and so the answer is yes. God will give us more than we can handle. He also gives us His Son Jesus Christ in the flesh, crucified and risen again. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10 in the warning against uh, uh, idolatry. Um, we must not indulge in sexual immorality, obviously temptation, as some of, as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test. So that's, boy, that flips real quick. Don't put Christ to the test. Not, does Christ put us to the test? Do not, we must not put Christ to the test, for some of them did and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble as some did and were destroyed by the deceit, by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our and, the, and those in Corinth's instructions on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. So if you, if you are, feel more self-righteous or haughty or, uh, uh, or more filled with the Spirit than, than your brother and you can speak more tongues and whatever else, whatever gobbledygook that, that, that you think uh, makes you puffed up and more of a Christian, uh, the harder you fall. Um, no temptation. Therefore, let anybody, they, let, therefore, let any 
one who thinks he stands takes take heed lest he fall. No temptation has has overtaken you that is not common to man. No temptation has been given to us that is uncommon to man. That, in other words, God isn't doing the temptation. All these temptations that were happening in Corinth and that happened to us are earthly temptations. Um, you, you see a beautiful woman, you think thoughts you ought not think. Um, uh, you, you see a, a bottle of liquor, you drink more than you ought to drink. Um, and and so on. All, all uh, you see, uh, you you watch too much TV, internet, whatever. Breaking the first three commandments, um, all in one swing. Uh, all of those things are not uncommon to man. Not now. So God doesn't give it to us. God is faithful. He will, ne he will not let you, and this is where, this is where that, the phrase comes from, God is faithful, and He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, He will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Now, that's where people kind of grasp at straws and say, well, Right there it says, uh, God is faithful and He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. Okay, A, that's different from uh, God giving you the temptation. Um, B, the escape is through Christ and not your ability. He will not let you, let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able, the ability, to endure it. All of that refers to Christ and him crucified and resurrected for you. So, of, of course, we of course we, we receive uh, more than we can handle. That's the entire that's the entire uh, uh, human life. We're we're living it, we're living in the mid of this coronavirus, COVID nineteen, Chinese virus, whatever you whatever you want to call it, whatever's politically uh, sensical to you, um, and so. That's kind of the question that a lot of people are asking now. Was well, God giving us more than we can handle? Um, no, He gave it to Jesus, His Son, on the cross. And He poured that out. He poured all wrath and all of our falling into temptation onto Christ for the atonement of mankind. So, it is false that God will not give you more than you can handle because it is true that you will receive more than you can handle, which is why we have Christ and His death and the forgiveness of sins. That way we can be assured of our salvation instead of needing a pep talk from our friends. Um, telling us not to worry, God won't be too big of a bully for you this time. Uh, rather, we look to Christ and say, there's, there's our escape from temptation. There's our escape uh, from, from, from uh, our, our, uh, our lust, our hunger, our drunkenness, our slothfulness, um, our greed. There, there is our escape from, from temptation, and, and none of us get out unscathed. And in that unscathing, there, there the trial sharpens, sharpens us, and the Word sharpens us as iron sharpens iron. And therefore, God it doesn't even come into the question of whether or not He, he gives us anything outside 
of telling us this. Psalm chapter 20. In my distress, I called to the Lord and He answered me. Deliver me, O Lord, from lying lips, from deceitful tongue. What shall be given to you and what more shall be done to you, you deceitful tongue? A warrior's sharp arrows with glowing coals of the broom tree. Woe to me. And then 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where my help, from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He, he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. He will keep your going in and your com your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. So the question is a bad question. Will God is God willing to give us more than we can handle? Put that to the side. The question is, will he hear you when you call in your distress? When you look up, when you fix your eyes to the hills and you ask, where does my help come? And the answer is, my help comes from the Lord. And we look at His Son, crucified and resurrected, and we find that answer. Then we have confidence. Not in the shaky foundation of, boy, I sure hope that God doesn't give me more than I can handle, but rather in the sure foundation of the rock as dense as Golgotha as hollow as the tomb and as uh, and as full uh, of faith in our hearts that even in the midst of trials we may cry out to God for for comfort and in the midst of temptation we would cry out to God that we would have the strength to through the Holy Spirit to finally overcome and gain the victory. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Christ, you fulfilled the whole law on our behalf and won the victory over Satan. Keep us from all temptation, that escaping all danger, we may appear with you in your kingdom. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we'll see you next week with another question. If you have a question that you would like answered, you can drop it in the comments. Uh, if not, we've brought up three here today that we can take and uh, run with. The Lord be with you and go in the peace of the Lord. Trusting in His promises and being bold to pray His Lord's Prayer.